Hello everybody, thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. After his successes at Barnet and Tewkesbury, Edward IV had finally eliminated the main part of the Lancastrian threat to his rule. However, his second reign, as we may call it, would also have its fair share of problems. Edward would be particularly bothered by his extremely troublesome brother, George, Duke of Clarence. George was not a man known for his loyalty, but his reconciliation with Edward had allowed the deposed king to reclaim the crown in 1471. And in the early stages of Edward's second reign, George appeared to be staying on side. George had played a significant role in mediating between Edward and the city of Coventry in 1472. Edward was extremely angry at Coventry, as his ally turned enemy Warwick the Kingmaker had been allowed to hold himself up in the city. By allowing Warwick to keep himself out of the king's clutches meant that the city was committing treason against Edward. However, via George's efforts, Edward pardoned Coventry and its mayor after he had killed Warwick at the Battle of Barnet. But this peace between Edward and his brother George would not last. In 1472, Edward attempted to return to normality of everyday governance and called a parliament where lordships and other possessions were restored, having previously been stripped during Henry VI's brief restoration. However, as things appeared to be settling down, an argument blew up between George and his and Edward's other brother, Richard, Duke of Gloucester. Richard wanted to marry Anne, the daughter of Warwick the Kingmaker, and the widow of Edward, Prince of Wales, the only son of Henry VI, who had been killed at Tewkesbury. However, George was not happy about this. He saw it as a threat to his right to inherit the possessions of the Kingmaker, who had been his father-in-law, as George had previously married the Earl's oldest daughter, Isabel. Edward had had to intervene before the dispute turned any uglier. Richard got his wish in marrying Anne, and a settlement was soon reached over the division of the lands and territories that formerly belonged to the Earl. Between 1476 and 1477, the relationship between Edward and George began to break down, this time irretrievably. George appears to have been alienated by the king due to the fact that he had several possessions, including Tutbury, taken away from him. So annoyed was George that he is said to have refused to eat or drink in the king's presence. Then, to George's even greater anger, he was thwarted from making a second marriage in 1477, his first wife Isabel having died in December 1476, to the daughter of the recently deceased Duke of Burgundy. There was now serious animosity between the King and George, and things were soon about to come to a head. George was becoming slightly unhinged, but Edward was not helping matters either. George believed that his wife had been poisoned, although she hadn't been, and George forced the execution of one of Isabel's completely innocent ladies-in-waiting. But Edward wasn't dealing with the situation particularly well either. Rumours of plots against him reached his ears and he had two members of George's household hanged. Again, they were innocent of the charges that were brought against them, which was, supposedly, of plotting against the king's life. The situation was now untenable.
and as a result, George was executed inside the Tower of London in 1478, though he was not drowned in a barrel of wine, as the legend goes. He had been a thorn in the side of Edward IV for many years, but the king had not helped himself during the first few years of the second reign. However, I do have some sympathy for Edward on this score, as George was clearly not an easy man to handle. Moving away from Edward's troubled relationship with George, he also had his sights set on restarting the Hundred Years' War. However, this didn't come to pass, and Edward made a truce with the French king, Louis XI, in 1475. In the latter part of Edward's second reign, another of England's ancient enemies began to cause trouble again, with the Scottish king, James III, invading the north of England. Edward was irate, as he had promised his daughter would marry James as a continuation of the peace between England and Scotland that had lasted for decades. An expedition was led by Richard, Duke of Gloucester, into Scotland. However, aside from burning land and making it as far as Edinburgh, the only thing they managed to achieve was capturing the border town of Berwick, and they wasted needlessly large amounts of money in the process. In 1483, Edward died. Various explanations for his death have been offered, including poison and grief at unwelcome news that had been brought to him from the continent. Other ailments, including malaria, have also been suggested. None of these are true, or at least likely. The fact is, Edward had developed a tendency for serious overindulgence and by the time of his death, he was massively overweight, a fate that would befall his grandson, Henry VIII. It's most probable he was killed by an illness brought on by his size, perhaps a stroke or a heart attack. He is a hard king to summarise. As a man, he appears to have been likeable and affable, although he had a serious temper. He was a brilliant military leader, but he lacked the ruthlessness as king required to kill off the Lancastrians for good. And at the end of both his reigns, he left England vulnerable, deposed at the end of his first reign, and only leaving a 12-year-old son to succeed him at the end of his second reign. Edward had had two opportunities to secure both his dynasty and legacy and had failed on both occasions.